Hey folks, uh, one of the differences this quarter from previous quarters is that as we're doing the myth projects and as we're reading the Odyssey in class, uh, you're going to have an outside reading project outside of class. So the Odyssey is this really ancient story that uh, follows this formula called the hero's journey, which we're going to go over in class. And um, the story that the Odyssey tells is the same story that has been told generation after generation by human beings across cultures uh, since, you know, the dawn of humanity. Uh, we, we love to tell the story about an individual who um, is pulled out of their daily lives and meets some kind of a mentor, some kind of a, a, a figure of wisdom who helps to guide them and then overcomes challenges and struggles and then re integrates back with their um you know with their with their world at the end and so as we look at the elements of the story uh as as we go through the odyssey we're going to look at similar elements in stories that you'll be reading and so i've got four book options for you well can i get all four fingers on the video uh, we got four four book options for you to choose from and i want to go over those today um, I'm going to assign these books to you. You'll read them this quarter as uh, we go through, but um, I'm not going to assess the book itself until the first week of the fourth quarter. So um, you'll read them and there'll be classworks that ask you to use them and make observations based on, on the books that you're reading and, and stuff like that. And I'll give you a reading schedule to sort of keep you on track, uh, but we'll have an assessment of <clears throat> the novels themselves That'll be like the other novel assessments we've had, where you're looking at um, you're looking at literary devices. Uh, I might ask you about a dynamic character, or I might ask you about um, a initiating event or a climax, or to give me an example of a symbol, or you know, like those sorts of things. Uh, and you'll use your individual book to answer that. So we'll have a summative assessment on them eventually. But right now I want to assign them to you to give you time to read them and to engage with them and to get excited and enjoy them and also time to look and choose. So um, as you can see here, you're going to come to this uh, spreadsheet, which is in today's module, and uh, click on it and you'll sign up um, in your block for the book that you want to read. And you can read whichever one you want. Uh, but I want to be clear here that as you sign up for your outside reading book, um, you'll have to either purchase the book or check it out from the library unless you choose Treasure Island. Treasure Island is, uh, it was published in the 1800s, and so it is, it is free. It is in the public domain, and there's uh, a free PDF of it that I've also attached in the module today uh, so that you can download it if you would prefer to read the online one and not have to go purchase a book. Uh, it is an older text, uh, but it is a fun text. I really love it. So let me go through the four options. And actually, you know, we'll start with the most modern and work our way backwards. Uh, so the most modern of the books that is an option for you is this one. It's called The Hunger Games. It's by Suzanne Collins. Um, many of you may have watched the movie or, or maybe some of you have even read the book. Pause. If you've read the book, don't pick a book you've already read. Read a new book. Uh, so if you've, if you've read The Hunger Games, don't choose it. Uh, choose, choose something else. And if you've read all four of these books, send me an email. I've got plenty of books that I've read that follow the hero's journey. I can give you a different one. Um, and we can, we can work that out. Um, you know, it'd probably be a little longer than these ones. Most of the ones I can think of are, are a bit on the more lengthy side, but that, that's fine. We, we can work our way through that. Uh, so the Hunger Games, the Hunger Games, let me read you what, what it's got here. And then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it and then we'll move on. Um, could you survive on your own? in the wild with everyone out to make sure you don't live to see the morning. In the ruins of a place once known as North America lies the nation of Pan Am, a shining capital surrounded by 12 outlying districts. The capital is harsh and cruel and keeps the districts in line by forcing them all to send one boy and one girl between the ages of 12 and 18 to participate in the annual Hunger Games, a fight to the death on live TV. 16-year-old Katniss Everdeen, who lives alone with her mother and younger sister, regards it as a death sentence when she steps forward to take her sister's place in the games. But Katniss has been close to dead before, and survival for her is second nature. Without really meaning to, she becomes a contender. But if she is to win, 
She will have to start making choices that weigh survival against humanity and life against love. So, uh, The Hunger Games is um, a dystopian future novel. Uh, America has collapsed. It's this future time with a civilization called Pan Am. Uh, they have this thing called The Hunger Games. Uh, it's uh, an arena combat that uh, takes place in a specially designed outdoor location. Uh, it's, it's fun. Um, your main character is uh, Katniss Everdeen, 16-year-old girl. It's first person, so you're going to be looking out of her eyes. It's um, written in the present tense, so things are coming at you very quickly. You're very, you're limited to only Katniss's understanding of the world. Uh, there's lots of allusions to mythology and to Rome in here, as you might imagine with a Colosseum arena e kind of situation. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, of Roman connections that we can talk about. I'll record a video about... Um, the well, I already did. I recorded a video about the Hunger Games that will help you understand it, and I'll show that um, as an option for for those who are doing this book in the next couple weeks. Um, so that's book number one, The Hunger Games. Lots of fun. I think you'd enjoy it. Uh, definitely a hero's journey there for Katniss Everdeen. Your next option is a book called Ender's Game. Ender's Game is by Orson Scott Card. Let me read you what it has to say about Ender's Game, and then um, we'll talk about that one. Uh, let's see. Andrew Ender Wigan thinks he is playing computer simulated war games. He is, in fact, engaged in something far more desperate. The result of genetic experimentation, Ender may be the military genius Earth desperately needs in a war against an alien enemy seeking to destroy all human life. The only way to find out is to throw Ender into ever harsher training, to chip away and find the diamond inside or to destroy him utterly. Ender Wigan is six years old when it begins. He will grow up fast, but Ender is not the only result of the experiment. The war with the buggers has been raging for a hundred years, and the quest for the perfect general has been underway almost as long. Ender's two sib older siblings, Peter and Valentine, are every bit as unusual as he is, but in very different ways. While Peter was too uncontrollably violent, Valentine very nearly lacks the capability for violence altogether. Neither was found suitable for the military's purpose. But they are driven by their jealousy of Ender and by their inbred drive for power. Peter seeks to control the political process to become a ruler. Valentine's abilities turn more toward the subtle control of the beliefs of the commoner and elite alike through powerfully convincing essays. Hiding their youth and identities behind the anonymity of computer networks, these two begin working together to shape the destiny of Earth, an Earth that has no future at all if their brother, Ender, fails. Uh, so this is going to follow Ender Wigan, your, your main protagonist, as he goes up to a place called Battle School, uh, which is an orbital space station in which the most genius uh, military minds of Earth uh, train against each other uh, in a series of experiments um, and and uh, mock battles. So uh, this one is going to follow a genius through throughout his struggles. It's a sci-fi book, uh, sort of a dystopian future. Earth has been attacked by aliens, insectoid aliens. Uh, it won the first battle, but is expecting a second invasion, and it's trying to repair. Uh, Ender is, is what's called a third. He, uh, most families are only allowed two children because of overpopulation problems, but they allowed Ender's family a third child because his two older siblings were so special. Uh, and so um, the story sort of follows him, and uh, it, it's a great uh, story. It's got lots of allusions in it as well, but the allusions in here are interestingly to um, Norse mythology. So if you're interested in Norse mythology, uh, I've recorded a video that talks a little bit about some of the connections there, um, and, and you can follow this one through. It's also got a lot of psychology in it. It's written in the third person, so it's a little different from uh, The Hunger Games. There's a sort of an omniscient narrator, but it gives you mostly from, from Ender's perspective. Uh, so uh, you don't you don't get a lot of omniscient glimpses. You get little glimpses through dialogue at the beginning of each chapter. Uh, it is a riveting book. When I read it, I got sucked in and I didn't put it down for two days until it was done. Uh, so I highly recommend it. Both Ender's Game and The Hunger Games are starts of series. So if you like the first one, there's more out there for you afterwards. Uh, going a little farther back, Ender's Game was, was published in the 80s. The Hunger Games was published in the early 2000s. Um, so we're about 20 years different. Uh, we get to The Hobbit, which I think was published in 38, 37. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Maybe I should look it up. Um, 
I'm looking it up right now. 37. Hey, I'm pretty good. Uh, so um, The Hobbit uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, the guy who wrote The Lord of the Rings. So if you like The Lord of the Rings movies, this is sort of the prequel. This is the one that started it all. Uh, so And there's, there's also Hobbit movies, but they are an abomination compared to the actual book. Uh, so the book The Hobbit is a lot of fun. Let me, let me read you the, I guess, story of it. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Not a nasty, dirty, wet hole filled with the ends of worms and the oozy smell, nor yet a dry, bare, sandy hole with nothing in it to sit down on or to eat. It was a hobbit hole, and that means comfort. Written for J.R.R. Tolkien's own children, The Hobbit met with instant critical acclaim when it was first published in 1937. Now recognized as a timeless classic, this introduction... To the Hobbit, Bilbo Baggins, the wizard Gandalf, Gollum, and the spectacular world of Middle-earth recounts the adventures of a reluctant hero, a powerful and dangerous ring, and a cruel dragon, Smog the Magnificent. The text in this 372-page uh, paperback, they're all about the same length. Um, don't, don't ever look at pages, look at word count, um, because depending on margins and things like that, um, you end up with, with different page lengths. Um, when, what you should do if you're, if you're really looking to see how long a book is, is go online and look up the title and then word count. And it'll give you the word count. You can look at the, the different word counts and know which one is longer or shorter, if that's your deciding criteria, which I would never suggest that it would be. Um, it's based on the first published in Great Britain, uh, whatever. You don't need all that, that mumbo jumbo at the bottom. But that's, that's The Hobbit. The Hobbit's kind of a fun book because it starts out uh, sort of comic. Uh, it's got real comedic elements. It's, it's sort of funny with this party and Bilbo and a bunch of dwarves that show up and this wizard. And he's like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Um, and then he gets sucked into this adventure and it gets more and more serious as the adventure continues, culminating in a giant battle with five armies and orcs and dwarves and elves and a dragon and, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's, it's a great read. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it is a little bit older and has a little bit older and a little bit higher level of vocabulary and language uh, than the other two. And so uh, if you're if you're a little bit of a struggling reader, uh, it may be more of a challenge for you. But if you're if you're a good reader, it shouldn't be a challenge should should just be uh, the kind of thing that you've come to expect. Uh, from class. It certainly, you know, as, as a reading level, isn't any higher than, say, Animal Farm. I don't think it's, it's, it's about on par, I would say, with that. Um, you know, so if you enjoyed, if you enjoyed Animal Farm, you didn't have trouble reading or understanding what was going on there. Um, the Hobbit's a great read and a good, good option for you. All right, uh, last one here before I close this video down. We have uh, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson, which was published in the 1890s, I believe. It is a pirate story and a, a thumping good pirate story. If you like pirates, uh, if you want to read the thing that inspired Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, read this. It's, it's enjoyable. But let me, let me read you what it says. For sheer storytelling delight and pure adventure, Treasure Island has never been surpassed. From the moment young Jim Hawkins first encounters the sinister blind pew at the Admiral Benbow Inn, until the climactic battle for treasure on a tropic isle, the novel creates scenes and characters that have fired the imaginations of generations of readers. Written by a superb prose stylist, a master of both action and atmosphere, the story centers upon the conflict between good and evil, but in this case, a particularly engaging form of evil. It is a villainy of that most ambiguous rogue, Long John Silver, that's where the restaurant gets its name, that sets the tempo for this tale of treachery, greed, and daring. Designed to forever kindle a dream of high romance and distant horizons, Treasure Island, in the words of G.K. Ch Chesterton, is, quote, the realization of an ideal that which is promised in its provocative and beckoning map, a vision not, oh, there's a map at the beginning, it's true, uh, a vision not only of white skeletons, but also green palm trees and sapphire seas. Uh, I'll stop there, uh, but it's a great book. I don't have it with me. It's in my classroom, so I can't I can't wave the book at you. Uh, but we have the the file for it, and you can you can read the file online, uh, which is nice. So anyway, uh, yeah, Treasure Island is it's old, so it's got even harder language. It's it's probably the hardest read in terms of its its lexical level, the difficulty of the language in the text itself. It also has pirate speak. They're like yar matey, you know, and they they say things that you know are piratey, and you have to you have to translate that. Um, 
dialogue, dialect, dialect. That's what I wanted uh, to to understand what's going on. Sort of like um, in a mice and men, George and Lenny talk in that sort of country accent. Um, they talk pirate accent in here off and on. So, um, but yeah, it's a story of Jim Hawkins. He's a cabin boy. You notice the the theme with all of these. You've got a central character who is young and inexperienced, and over the course of the story, they are going to become experienced and grow and learn. The only one of them that's not young is Bilbo. He's he's you know, in his 30s or 40 or something like that. Uh, but whatever the case, maybe he's even 50. He's just lived in the in a little country house his entire life, and he's never gone off and done anything exciting. And so for the first time in his life, he's leaving his comfort zone. And it's very similar to the rest of these characters. But Jim Hawkins is a young um, man who, who finds a treasure map and then ends up on the adventure of his lifetime. And the, the villain, the enemy in this is... is top three best villains I've ever read in any story. Long John Silver, you never know if he's good or evil. You never know if you like him or if you hate him, and maybe it's both simultaneously. Uh, he is, he is so, the word they use is ambiguous, and that's the right word. You just can't tell. And so you're always on the edge of your seat trying to figure out what it is that he's going to do. Um, so anyway, uh, they all fit really well with the unit that we're going to be um, going through. They all follow the hero's journey. This one may be a little bit better because it's on a boat. Uh, but any of any of them would be excellent reads for you. You just need to pick one and then go to the outside reading list and write your name down uh, with whatever one it is that you're going to do and then get it. You, you can go get it at McKay's. Uh, you can order it used online. You can get it from Amazon. Whatever the case, you need to get it. Um, I'm giving you about a week to get yourself a copy of the book and then we'll start a reading schedule and, and you'll be able to get through it and keep up. We'll do the reading schedule by chapters so that regardless of what version of the book you have, uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So if you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. If you'd like to talk about the books, I'm happy to do that in the breakout room. This will be fun. Um, they're, they're all great books. They're all enjoyable. And uh, I'd be more than happy to read any of them again at, at the drop of a hat. All right. Thank you.